All right. Hello. Hello and welcome to tonight's fantastic dinosaur action and Frixian action with Elish Norn, mother of machines, mother of dinos, because this is Stampy Dinos. Oh, it's it's going to be good. She has performed quite fantastically. We'll go over exactly why I love this classic option at, at this point, I think. Oh my goodness, I might have to actually pick up a few copies in paper. Maybe four copies and we'll get into that as well, because you might be thinking to yourself, I only want one or two, I don't want to see multiples, but that can be good. Stacking the triggers of Elish Norn. Really, really quite fantastic and exciting. There's lots of enter the battlefield effects with this Stampede Dinos deck. As is usually the case at the sideboard, I hope eventually it gets fixed there. Ah, still doesn't look right on the phone. It's crazy how it's completely broken on everything. But I feel like you know, pretty close, pretty close. I guess a little bit bigger right below the power and toughness there. Okay. Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, four copies. Why do I have four copies? I play one, maybe before Galtus Stampede Tyrant. That could be a little bit rough. Needing a total of five mana. Maybe I could get that on turn four, but usually not the case. Usually, turn four, as it goes, I can make six green. With Castle Garen Briggs ability, Sunken Citadel, two other lands, Castle, we get there. So we still might be held off of Elish Norn. Kind of similar to Polanyi's Hatcher or Regis or Alpha as it goes. Turn 4, possibly playing Carnage Tarrant, and then Polanyi's Hatcher or Regis or Alpha. Regis or Alpha, Alpha. Alpha afterwards. Maybe I need more coffee. Should have taken a nap today. We're going to be putting some opponents to sleep, though. Absolutely. Deadly. Deadly. Where's the sleep? Oh, there it is. But yeah, Regis Ralpha, Planes Hatcher. Held off of playing these on turn four. Making the six green. Only green with Castle Garenbreak. I should maybe sprinkle in some other way to spend mana as if it were mana of any color for creatures. There are a couple options for that. Vizier of the Menagerie. Menagerie. Oh, that. That is a tongue twister. Vizier of the Menagerie is an option if you guys want to look it up. I could I could probably pull it up, but we'll leave it there. You can play any creature off the top of your library as well. Gold Vein Hydra, though. As I continue to splash for fantastic stuff, Leyline of Sanctity, which is in here somewhere, helping to play it. If I don't see Leyline of Sanctity to start or... Maybe the opponent kills the Gold Vein Hydra. It, continually. I love playing this for X is 1, X is 2. If I get one or two treasures, I'm perfectly happy. I'm ahead just a little bit. I would hope it's at least two treasures. That'd be a pretty nice boost. But hey, even if it is one, play it, get to attack with it. Maybe a couple turns, chip away a bit. The opponent kills it, we get a treasure, and we get the only source of white we need to play Elish Norn, which is quite nice. Very easy to splash for this. Something so incredibly powerful. But let's say we get one down before Galtus Stampede Tyrant. We have another one in our hand. If the second one is part of the batch of Galta creatures that are put out, both exist at a moment as everything enters. So Regis or Alpha, it would make three tokens. Pretty fantastic stuff. One for the original one, and two, one for each of the copies. And then I have to choose which one to sacrifice. It would be the one that was already out, but I get the bonus. I could have Redisaur and Polanyi enter. I would make four egg tokens with one Polanyi. That could be pretty good for chump blocking situations. But the Vaultborn Tyrant, as it continues to perform, absolutely one of my favorites. If I like drawing cards and gaining life. So now I'm going to do that double. My goodness, if I had a Vaultborn plus Elish Norn and an Elish Norn already out. Oh, wow. That's, 
I'm trying to do the math there because Voltborn draws when it enters itself. Plus it would trigger off of the Elish Norn that was also put out with the Voltborn. So two triggers from the one Voltborn entering, but those two are doubled by both Elish Norns, the one that was out and the one that was just put out. So I think I would draw six cards and gain 12, 18 life. Something like that. It would be good. Lovely. Of course, Galta Stampede Tarrant. Doubling its triggers would be nice. If I have a bunch of draw triggers on the stack with the Vault Board Tarrant, the second instance of this trigger, I just have it happen after the draw triggers. So I've got all those cards, I've refreshed my hand, then potentially I get to put a bunch more creatures out with the second copy of the trigger, and then I definitely, hopefully, get to decimate the opponent. There is a little bit less, a little bit lower on the haste side of things. No Sarek and Gorkla, Xenagos, God of Revels, things like that. Going back to the eight options for it. For Regisaur, for Pelani, could be a little bit light on that side of things. We're going to have to keep an eye on it, but for the most part, the game plan is the same. And the game plan is supercharged, and we get to hate against the wide range of stuff. Leyline of Sanctity, of course, I would be happy to start out with it. But it could be, and is, completely dead and useless in some matchups. At the very least, the baseline... I could potentially have multiple Elish Norns out, getting multiple triggers, sacrifice one of them, and at the very least one always helps me do a wide range of things. Extra eggs, extra dinos, extra card draw, extra dinos with nurturing bristleback if we don't forest cycle it to get some forest type land, or extra Galta Stampede Tyrant stuff. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And I... I'm pretty sure Elish Norn doesn't double Gold Vein Hydra enters the battlefield with. So it's kind of like the counters are already attached to it. Pretty sure that doesn't work, but yeah, at the very least, you get the idea. It helps me all the time, and then sometimes it will shut down opponents. Then if we face those black decks, we'll bring in Leyline of Sanctity, probably trim Elish Norn, switch around the stuff that needs white, and get the job done. Although the sideboard, if I can remember remember what it is. For Pithing Needle, I want to potentially stop Field of Ruin or Demolition Field, as you have seen or maybe experienced yourself. Painful stuff, those lands. Sacrificing to take out Sunken Citadel, Castle Garenbrig. Painful. And sometimes those lands that hurt me they're part of a mono black deck or vampires as well. So Pithing Needle, the second copy, could turn off Soren, any planeswalker, any man land, any artifact with an activated ability. So much stuff. And so often those lands have hurt me, among other things. So happy to bring it in. Lovely, lovely stuff. And then what else was it? March of Otherworldly Light. I brought in March of Otherworldly Light because... I wanted a well-rounded instant speed piece of interaction that hit um, multiple types of things. Creatures specifically. Even though I'll likely have to spend three mana to exile Lamalia, she has a mana value of two, so you pay one white for March plus the mana value of the thing you target. So Amalia, boom, instant speed, gone, done, out of there. Or an artifact or an enchantment, I believe. It might be a planeswalk, but you get the idea. Instant speed interaction for one specific thing. That's what I'm looking for. And if I still have Elish Norn in, bring in March of Otherworldly Light. If I have multiple copies of Elish Norn, I could use that as a way to supercharge March. Exile a redundant copy to pay two for X be able to take out something a little bit bigger but i thought i should yeah, just try try march so we have something we can do against amalia that's a oh archon archon of amaria if we face a combo deck 
we bring this in and then hopefully they die because they're going as slow as us and we do one thing a turn and it kills you but a combo opponent well if they only do one thing a turn they're probably dead scorpion how's it going <laughs> hopefully you're here to witness the devastation maybe you're you're at work or maybe you're not at work hopefully it's the weekend for you but if some of you guys are at work or you're driving home or you're driving to work hopefully it's good or hopefully you got some good rest if you're already sleeping when i do this not working today thumbs up that's what i like to hear i guess my philosophy would be work hard play easy yeah yeah i you know put in my time i want to relax yeah yeah work hard play easy i came up with that a little while ago and it seemed to make sense how to get yeah yeah that's the hardest part it's rough you basically have to just open up packs, redeem mythic rare wild cards, and uh, there you go. Or if you're talking in paper, that would be uh, also kind of difficult. Work easy, play hard. Okay. Hey. Whatever works for you. This hand works for me, though. 100%. Sunken and stomping plus Sylvan scrying to grab Castle Garenbrig. Two Elish Norn Mother of Machines. Eh could be rough we don't have a ley line of sanctity in so we don't have to feel bad about keeping a hand that doesn't have it although otherworldly gaze makes me think ah yeah oh oh castle garen brig well the opponent is potentially dead because now everything just changed completely hopefully they don't counter silver okay okay phew they don't counter Sylvan Scrying, crossing my fingers. But yeah, Voltborn, you gotta get that. 100%. Man, big time. I'm just happy I got my copies. I was kind of hesitant to bite the bullet and get the playset of Voltborn Tyrant just because it is so early in the set. But I felt oh, the price is probably right, hopefully right, and... Uh, well, we're playing against Mono Blue Mill. That's going to be a little bit painful. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it should be okay-ish. We can choose white, just in case down the line we want to play Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. But Voltborn, okay, don't, don't, don't mill Galtus Stampede Tyrant. Don't do it, don't do it. Oh, no, not fraying sanity. This is this is getting painful. Oh, oh boy. Okay, well, Voltborn Tyrant, let's go. I think that could be good. Galta. Oh, that's not Galta. Oh, boy. Next turn, play Elish Norn. Draw two, gain six. Oh, we'll see. Oh, absolutely. It is uh, fantastically super duper. That's not good. Oh, no. Okay, well, uh, we'll kill it. Gain some life, draw a card. Maybe I get called to Stampede Tyrant. I don't. Okay, yeah. Nothing I could have done. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then the hell with you. Okay, mono blue mail. Oh, what was doing the mega mail? So this opponent, uh, unfortunately, they got the Teresian Mindbreaker into the graveyard. It has that unearth ability. They can play it for four. It gains haste. And whenever it attacks, defending player mills half their library. So because I milled half, I mill the other half with Fraying Sanity there. At the beginning of each end step, Enchanted Player mills X cards, where X is the number of cards put into their graveyard from anywhere this turn. So I mill half, and Freeing Sanity means I mill my other half. 
of my library and uh yeah that's uh that how that's how it goes but enchant player if i have ley line of sanctity fraying sanity cannot enchant me because it has to target me ah ah fleet swallower and bruvac <laughs> painful stuff i don't like bruvac uh, i know that guy i saw him in the original jump start it's no fun no fun at all each opponent's time okay oh what is this e i don't even have ley line of sanctity and uh, bouncers beatdown i honestly don't know why bouncers beatdown is in there <laughs> yeah i couldn't tell you why i'm using the right list i'm pretty sure well that's what you get for a sideboard that you can't see but uh bouncers beatdown should have been ley line of sanctity and one archon of Ameria would have gone away you never really run blue is pretty painful as okay well oh got to well i didn't lock in anything there's no ley line of sanctity to bring in anyways yeah ooh ooh and Naya Gishath, yeah, 100%, and the mono green Sarith, the Viper's Fang, always, always deadly stuff. Everybody death touch when they're tapped, and what more could you want? I don't want a whole lot more from this hand. Should be quite fantastic. Sunken Citadel, choosing green plus the forest, then nurturing Bristleback, forest cycle it to get the third source of green for arc druids hopefully i naturally draw into it that'd be ideal okay well that, that's how it goes boom there we are now i could get temple garden you know what i'm gonna get temple garden i've got cavern souls which could be the source of red for Pelini's hatcher or regis or alpha but uh yeah 100 percent big time all well not all the dinos but a lot of the dinos have trample. Pair that with, ooh, deadly stuff, deadly potential. If you have death touch and trample, for anybody that isn't aware, you only have to assign one damage, which is lethal damage because of death touch, and then the rest continues on through. Say three creatures are blocking your one creature, and it has eight power. You would assign one to each of the three creatures and then five damage would continue on through pretty pretty fantastic stuff well pretty it could well let me think let me think hmm hmm no oh, cavern of souls And then we go Sylvan Scrying to grab our land for the turn, next turn. Six, seven, yeah. Because then I can make eight Arc Druids to grab Galta. Then we put Vaultborn, T-Rex, Carnage Tyrant, and somebody else out. Okay. I don't think I'm dead yet. Huh. Guess we're about to find out. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't see it was in the graveyard. Okay. Okay. That's how it goes. Yeah. I'm going to get Leyline of Sanctity in there. Now, that would have been nice if they didn't have fraying sanity okay well it's a mono blue mill painful stuff sometimes you just die and uh there's not a whole lot you can do okay ley line ley line then we'll get right back into a match and hopefully not face mono blue mill again oh. there we go oh I missed you, good buddy. Get in there. 
all of them. One Archon and Bouncer's Beatdown. Nope, there's Bouncer. All the Bouncers are gone, now I need Pithing Needle. Nope, Pithing Needle. Uh, Archon, Archon it is. I think I removed some Archons. This is kind of like a, a mini game. And it's, oh, I removed all the Archons, okay. Well, we'll find out if uh, if it's right. Okay, the foil uh, foil murder and the wanted poster art. Oh, makes a whole lot of sense. Of course, there was murders at Karlov Manor, but a foil murder wanted poster hmm, also would be good. Yeah. I kind of like that style with the wanted poster. It doesn't work for every card, but for some it's just mm, perfect. Pretty fantastic. No, no mono blue mail. Let's let's not do that again. I could have potentially got them pretty good. Maybe Terra Sunder, which could have exiled the Teresian. Mindbreaker before it attacks because we don't want to mill cards. Could have also exiled the fraying sanity, which killed us, comboing those two things. That would have been good too. DC Brano, okay. Face DC Brano before, sometimes on auras, sometimes on mono black waste, not. But that would not do the trick right there. Oh, much, much better. Hopefully, it's not mono black waste, not, but that. Will be a pretty decent hand whether or not that's the case we got plenty of okay <laughs> well we know what we're bringing in oh boy quite decent though four lands to start and it's basically the entire package that i hope for and getting that source of white for elish norn mother of machines could be quite lovely Okay, okay, well. Nurturing Brisk back, get something else. Probably, yeah, Stomping Ground. Just in case I want the Source of Red for Redisaur or Polanyi's Hatcher. I like the Crackle. Crackle would be pretty good. Okay, more, more Thought Seas. Uh, ouch. But at least I got that stomping ground. I think we could get there, hopefully. Okay. Oh, oh boy. Okay, Arcdruid's Charm to grab the last land I need. I can make seven. Arcdruid's grabs uh, something. Something good. No more Thought Seas. Don't do it. Okay, that's also something. Not too bad. No more Thoughtsies. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh boy. Just draw a creature, any creature. I, I don't care what it is. Just do it. Oh, another... Sunken Citadel. <laughs> I guess they have removal for Galta or Redisor. Sometimes when you have 18 lands, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you, you get flooded. Oh boy. Bet Galta's dead. Nuts. Okay, the fatal push. Not too bad. Not the worst thing in the world. A cool, uh, yeah. I guess you could say a cool is cool. Pretty scary looking too. Transmogrify for Atraxa, not too bad. Hopefully they don't draw bitter end. Uh, something like that. Okay. 
don't get heartless act, bitter end, something that can take out Galta. As long as Galta survives, we might be okay. Shildred's Edict, not the worst thing in the world. I would sacrifice Regis or Alpha, so it's not that bad. I hope. Hey, do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. And still die. Okay, I gained seven. Okay, never mind, never mind. That would have been a little bit premature. But again, look at this flood. You got me. No more lands. Don't do it. Don't do it. We'll grab a second castle, Garenbrig, just in case they would maybe try to kill me. Huh. Lovely. Lovely attracts a transmogrify. Uh, we should be able to get there. Carnage, Tyrant, T-Rex, Vault Board, Tyrant, any of those should be coming up, I would hope. Arc Druids to grab any of them and likely play them then and there. It's got to happen. Yeah. Hmm. Got to be a creature. Something good. Most all the creatures in the deck are good, so... We should be alright. Well, we don't have anything to play, but we'll play that and hope they don't have removal, which I expect they will. Okay, Vaultborn Tyrant. Let's go. Sadly, it wasn't one of the four Trainix Rexes. Yeah, Vaultborn would be nice. We could almost play multiple things. Hmm. Transmogrify on the token, or they just kill Galt and then do whatever. It seems like they might not have removal. Get another Attracts and... Oh! What's going on? Good lord, what is happening in there? You won! You did it! Huh, that's odd. Well, they did a goof. I'll take it. I'll smoke them. Smack them. And I'll bring in Leyline of Sanctity to stop all their funny business. Do I like Elish Norn? I like Elish Norn because you know what it does? It turns off Atraxa. Thumbs up get them that'd be good gold vein hydra i mean technically i didn't need it at all you know what yeah we'll trim that we gotta trim something and i do still want to keep an elish norn i was saying how i would trim elish norn if i was bringing in leyline of sanctity but i think in this case it would be nice to have her yeah oh that is a nice hand to have. You know what? We're going to keep that. It could be very good. Even in the face of multiple thought seizes. I'm going to take the risk and hope that there isn't multiples back to back. Certainly seems to be the case. That's good. Maybe they left that mana up because they wanted to fatal push whatever I played. Okay, that that is certainly getting quite deadly. We'll get... Cavern Souls down. I could have paid two to have the second Temple Garden enter untapped, but I didn't really need to. Might as well not take the shock of two if I don't have to. Hopefully Arc do its charm next turn. That would be ideal. Ooh. Oh, oh, Vaultborn Tyrant. Yes, please. Never mind. Okay. Next turn. That's why I don't play Cavern of Souls. Okay, well, we, we search for a sunken. Not the end of the world. No, we'll get there. Play Temple Garden next turn. Untapped plus Arc Druid's Charm. And uh, that's how it goes. I hope. Looks like they might be uh, doing you know what. Attack with the skeleton and then transmogrify afterwards. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. I gotta say, it would have been nice to 
get Voltborn Tyrant this turn. We could have. If Cavern of Souls was a source of green plus castle, search for a sunk and it puts it out. So we were looking at six plus another temple. That would have done the trick. Getting to seven on turn four. Ooh, deadly. I do like the ley line of sanctity, though, I got to admit. Hmm. Hmm. No, we got a temple garden. Big time. Arcdruids, sunken. Let's go. Don't, uh, don't think about it too hard. And then, if by chance we got Galta's Stampede Tyrant next turn, and they hadn't done too much thought, see stuff. They'd be I may be close to dead. It would be good. Able to make seven at the moment. Eight with the temple garden. Let's see it. Let's do it. Let's go. Oh boy. That's what it's all about. Stack them, attack them, gain a bunch of life, draw a bunch of cards. You're about to see, oh, kill it. I don't care, I don't care. Use your removal. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna be gaining so much boatloads of life. I should be safe, hopefully. Oh, oh look, 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 look at that. What mother of dinos, that is a, Mother load of life and cards and maybe we're not safe. I think we are. Oh, I think we might be. <laughs> we're about to find out. They can't use any removal on vault. What do I want to discard? I guess a, a sunken. We don't need that anymore. Whew. Okay. As long as they don't have a sweeper, they're done for. Hopefully Elish Norn sticks around, but if... Well, it doesn't really matter. Galt is entering, putting Regisaur and Polanyes. They would have to have... Yeah. They have to have Exile removal for Vaultborn. It would copy itself, re-enter as an artifact dinosaur. But it would double up with Elish Norn. Whoa. Man. Man. This is a perfect example. A perfect recovery. Hmm. Wow. If Elish Norn was anything else, but also big enough as four power, just because she is what she is, I drew three extra cards, and I gained nine extra life. Vaultborn is enter. That is what it's all about. That is part of the inspiration. Double up, make it better. Oh, you, what are you doing? Don't do that. Don't do. Uh. Oh, oh, boo. Oh, absolutely brutal with Geshath. 100%. What you got up your sleeve, death? Call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me! Oh, it, it just gets deadlier and deadlier. You're so dead. You're so dead. It doesn't matter what you have, who you have. Smoke out of the water. 100%. Just, uh, just, just pretty good. Pretty good. It's a lot of life. Ooh. Da, 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 da. Um, I want something else big. 
18. I don't want to draw. No, we're we can't draw any more cards. Submit zero. Yeah, we can't. We can't draw any more cards. I don't want to deck myself. That's a painful situation. By yeah, 76 life is pretty darn good. That's what you get. You're staring down a Traxa and they're at 33 and you still don't even care because you do something so absolutely gross. Swing to win. We'll get there. We'll get there. But again, just keep in mind, if you ever run into this, stop yourself after you do maybe one cycle. Keep in mind how much you've drawn. If you put one more creature out, maybe it's going to be okay, but... Uh, if you put all those creatures out that you had drawn with the other trigger from Galta, you would deck yourself. Vaultborn Tyrant is not a May clause. When it or another creature enters with power four or greater, you gain life and draw a card. If it was May, that would be nice for sure, because you could save yourself, but yeah, yeah, oh. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, e, ah, ooh. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Phew. Now, some of you might say that's overkill and that's uncalled for, but think to yourself, how many other decks could you feel so absolutely confident in that you would win on one turn dropping so much damage that you can get past the seven life gain from a track. So they were at 33, so the seven life would technically bring them up to 40, plus the goblin blocking, having to deal, plus the seven from a track so herself. So the life gain brings them up to 40, 47 with her toughness, 49 with the goblin, dealing more than 49 damage one turn all hasty all dead yeah got him we got broken sons of uh Aurier. hopefully i'm pronouncing that right but it's not overkill you just always kill that's what i like to say i'm just glad i redeemed myself a little bit after that uh mono blue mill disaster yeah don't listen to anybody that says it's overkill it's always kill in all situations because there's not too many other decks based heavily around creatures that could confidently just smoke them that turn you know grinding it out it's pretty hard to grind it out against an attracts a big a very good flying creature with lifelink and vigilance hard to claw your way back but sometimes you bite your way back and you chew your way back and you rip apart all opponents now yeah. don't push it don't push it i'll give you a war you won't believe that was a war that was a massacre man nice that it's finding an opponent after about 30 seconds it's taken quite some time. Usually it takes upwards of a minute, where it was pretty fast previously, but, you know, Explorer, maybe not being so popular. It does, it does, when it hits the board. I think that is a pretty good case for Elish Norn. Just getting three more triggers, because she entered with Vaultborn and Carnage, I think it's a no-brainer, or it could be other things that double enter the battlefield effects. There's a few of those around, but those things usually aren't creatures. Elish Norn for potentially hurting the opponent, but being a creature itself, so it kind of makes sense with Galta putting multiple stuff out, but got to, okay, that's better. Get the mulligan out of the way. No, carnage, yeah, carnage turns. But yeah, you get what I'm saying there. 
uh, Elish Norn simply because it's a creature and can be put out with Galta. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Hopefully we do okay, although I would imagine this is Boros Convoke. We got the Novice Inspector plus a clue token. Gleeful Demolition going to be probably sacrificing that to make three goblins. And uh, oh, oh, I've never faced Boros Convoke before. Playland for the Loxodon uh, thingamajig. Okay, well, that's still not great. Now the Loxodon thingamajig. Oh, the, okay. It's that or the Knight Errant of Eos. When it enters the battlefield, you look at the top six cards. That's pretty deep. You may reveal up to two creature cards with mana value X or less, where X is the number of creatures that convoked it. Five creatures convoked it, so... Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's pretty good. But hopefully we can survive the top deck in that arc to its charm, absolutely saving us to play the castle for the turn, but also put the sunken out. We can't get better than that. We would kill him if we got called to Stampede Tyrant next turn. We would not kill him because we are dead. It's a trap! Almost dead. Okay. <laughs> a pretty cool stuff, though, to know if I had drawn one specific thing, they would have been dead absolutely, without question. Voltborn nurturing Polanyi's Hatcher, that's. 8 with Nurturing, 6 with Vaultborn, yeah, oh, oh, how fantastic is that? Would have gained a bunch of life? You can see right now the Sylvan Scrying being uh, mostly useless. Although we are at 2, Temple Garden would have had to shock us, and uh, so we wouldn't actually have won. But if Temple Garden was something else that entered untapped, yeah, it would have been okay. Do I like Archon of Ameria? Not so much. I kind of do. If the opponent goes Gleeful Demolition to get those goblins to make a bunch of creatures on one single turn, they can't Convoke to also cast something big. And that could really slow down their potential. It could, it could hold them off. Although they can do that on turn two. And Archon of Ameria is not coming down till at least our turn three. Do I like that? Oh. Pretty much hope for the best. Hmm. Yeah, I say we keep it as is. March of Otherworldly Light taking out one thing. Yeah. Pithing Needle. There's not a whole lot of activated abilities of stuff in Boros Convoke. Really just need a good old sweeper. Extinction Event. You know, splashing for the single black. As I'm splashing for the single white of Elish Norn. No, it's not too hard. We'll try it. Again, I don't have high hopes for something nasty and aggressive like this, but uh, but you never know. Maybe, maybe just maybe they stumble a bit. Or the Gold Vein Hydra. Just because this is a pretty aggressive deck, aggressive-ish, if we could get the Gold Vein down and... If it could be decently sized, maybe three, I'm hoping, possibly. That could be quite nice. We'll play it next turn, even if I draw another land. And we could make Gold Vein possibly three. Nah, I'll get it down for two. That should be good. Might deter a little bit of aggression from opponents as well. Uh, maybe it's the, the elephant. Okay, yep, the venerated Loxodon. I can never remember that name. It puts a counter on each creature that convokes it. Uh, you know, uh, pretty good. Get this down for two and uh, not attack. Maybe they don't play Imodane's Recruiter. Okay, not, not too bad. Kind of bad. Two, six. Now we weren't making the mana for Galta's Stampede Tarrant. We could have made six. Two with the treasure. The other two with the forest and the temple garden. Activating its ability. But, uh... 
Yeah. Uh, can't win them all. But you can beat up a Traxa pretty darn good. Yeah. I could reasonably add in a sweeper, trim all the Archon of Ameria, maybe the Pithing Needle. But again, for such a wide batch of games, it was Mono Black, Mono Black, Rakdos Vampires, Rakdos Vampires. And sometimes that's just variants. You get a nice pocket of stuff that really feels painful. Thought sees, you know, starts to feel a little bit old after the second match, third match in a row, facing it down, turn one, all the time. And you think, oh boy, is this the overwhelming majority of stuff? And well, sometimes that's the case, but usually it's good to get a wide batch of matches in a good perspective and get a better feel for everything what actually is a little bit more common whatever format whatever queue best of one certainly can be quite a bit different than best of three yeah, i kind of like that but i like this a lot better well, trim nurturing bristleback we're going sylvan scrying down not turn two that's not the send triplets, that is Trostani Discordant, I believe. Pretty sure. Something like that. But what do we got up the opponent's sleeve? Grixis colors, black, blue, and red. Would they have a counter? They might. They might be holding up removal as well. I won't go with Sylvan Scrying. Grabbing a sunken citadel wouldn't have done anything anyways. I want to have him try and play something. Okay, okay, well, we'll try for it. See if they counter for two. Hopefully not for three, but if they counter for two, they likely had that counter the previous turn anyways. They're thinking about countering it. Probably. Oh, you can't do that. Don't do it. Don't do that. Oh boy, they might be learning their goof pretty darn quick. Able to go with Carnage turn next turn, Vault Born, hopefully the turn after that. Or again, maybe they're saving their counter spell for something big. But they're about to learn that that's not going to work. I hope. Now, Send Triplets is scary, deadly from Shards of Alara, I believe. Alar reforged or whatever. I was playing quite heavily when the Alara block was in full swing. But now we're going to be swinging pretty hard, I hope. Eh, we'll see. Surprise. It is a little bit rough. We don't have Cavernous Souls, and I do suspect they have something like that. But possibly... This could also be Transmogrify with the Forsaken Miner and that zombie. They have to have something up their sleeve. Whatever they're doing, this is suspicious. Reanimate Priest of Forgotten Gods that can't be activated at instant speed. Oh boy. Watch this. They're going to tap and they're going to make me sacrifice a creature. But I'm going to sacrifice Vaultborn Tyrant. And then I'm going to get a copy of Vaultborn Tyrant. And then they're going to feel extra silly. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Do it. Do it. Oh, this is going to feel good. And then we go Gaul to next turn, and we double up on all the counters with Elish Norn. And uh, most of their creatures can't block those zombie tokens and the Forsaken Miner. So this is, I'm liking the looks of this. I don't feel too bad. Hopefully they don't have removal for Vaultborn straight up. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. I, I dare you. Oh, that's not not so great. Oh, feels so good when they do that. Okay, fantastic. Oh, Arc Druid's charm as well. Charming, charming. The latest Kamigawa set was a doozy. Very, 
a very fantastic stuff but yeah send triplets so so expensive i was thinking of maybe buying it some of those cool older legendary creatures but uh yeah the price tag turned me off of it i'm pretty sure the send triplets are pretty expensive maybe the opponent thinks they can fail to push the token which oh you have no power here okay well uh priest of forgotten gods there is one thing that can absolutely gut that plan sacrifice two other creatures when they tap it any number of target players that's gonna be very funny when we devastate the priest of forgotten gods yeah no it's lovely and likely they do have thought sees i would be surprised if they didn't dress as well we don't exactly need elish norn i don't think it's probably a lot of sacrifice stuff so the early gold vein hydra potentially helping to protect carnage tyrant if we get it down they don't have fatal push we drop carnage tyrant we still have that big healthy gold vein it's sacrificed to the shieldred's edict we make the treasures we get the galta as we hopefully do here but yeah uh, you know what i'm gonna try that even though there's no ley line of okay hey well we confirmed what they do have oh okay so it was reprinted all right it's good to know oh boy another sylvan scrying could be quite deadly as long as they don't have a count oh, hopefully they don't have a counter spell cross your fingers that's not the case we're about to find out oh oh love it possibly arc druid's charm next turn but go castle garenbrig plus arc druid's grab another sunken but to start we'll try for sylvan scrying and play the second sunken as our land for the turn and then castle garenbrig supercharging a secret lair version huh that's pretty good hopefully this is good enough though source of red uh, you know what let's do a source of red just in case we get into a scenario where we might want to use the red from sunken to play Pelanes. i could see it coming up potentially hopefully they don't have land destruction field of ruin and all that stuff okay pre pretty good oh oh okay now the question becomes huh I say we just let them do what they want to do and then at the end of their turn we use Arctrudes to secure that final mana we need well nurturing bristleback would do that we'll wait and see what they do hopefully they do something they have to have shenanigans up their sleeve you, you gotta think something's gonna happen i'd be surprised if it didn't huh okay well maybe Okay, it looks like they they don't. Good, good. Get that Cavern of Souls named Dinosaur. Oh boy. Oh boy, hopefully they don't have either Gus. Cross your fingers, folks. Uh, okay, good, 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 good. Ruthless aggression. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Spell activated ability or triggered ability. Surprising. I never would have expected that in a million years. Overcharged amalgam. So they cast it and then they exploited a creature, the goblin, and they were able to counter the triggered ability, Galta, to put everything onto the battlefield. Ooh, that is 
That's pretty slick. I like it. I like it a lot, but I also like Volborn Tarrant, I hope. Hopefully they don't have another overcharged amalgam. Yeah. Oh, I, I see the, the shenanigans that are happening. Okay, okay. Well, that's uh, how it goes, I hope. They've got a, a lock of sorts with the overcharged amalgam and... Uh, huh. Okay, this is this is interesting. He does still have to deal with those bodies, FK. Yeah. But I think we should be all right. We're at 11. Staring down a 12-12 in a 6-6 trample. They can't counter anything I play, which is quite ideal. Now, what do I want to do? I could just try to smack him. I think that would be good. We just respond with Arc Druid's Charm. Whatever they have... Whatever they don't have. <laughs> yes. Oh, it can't counter spells, can it? Oh yeah, it exploits a creature. Counter target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. It stops a lot of stuff. That is, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like, I'm just glad Cavern of Souls saved me big time. I figured they had to have some counter spells up their sleeve. I didn't really need anything else. I didn't need the source of white from Temple Garden, so Cavern of Souls felt right if they had some way to counter stuff. Every, everything was attached with Cavern of Souls by that point. They, they missed their window, but uh, yeah. They could have countered Arc Druid's Charm, but I hadn't shown the fact that I had Cavernous Souls, so they were figuring, oh, Arc Druids, I'm going to let them grab a big creature that I can counter. But then I grabbed Cavern, and then they're like, oh, shoot, I just messed up. And now they were feeling pretty bad. But if they had countered Arc Druids, I believe they could have played the overcharged amalgam at that point and slowed us down a little bit oh cavern is yeah so amazing i don't know but that was uh that was very interesting stuff though i still feel that i should have three copies of cavern with the gold vein hydra possibly making those treasures it does help to potentially cast the arc to its charm i feel a little bit more comfortable with the gold vein hydra Getting the three sources of green for Arc Druids there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't think I would ever go down to one copy of Cavern of Souls. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve copies, twelve cop as many copies, as many things, as many as I need to get the job done of whatever I want. Double it up, double it up, triple it up quadruple it up Elish Norn mother of machines helps out quite a bit oh yes oh oh 100% Cavern of Souls does the trick and maybe Cavern of Souls would help Elish Norn enter the battlefield because if they can't somehow counter Galta let's say I had two caverns I got Elish Norn down and then I played Galta. It would double up on the trigger of Galta. And it would need two overcharged amalgams to exploit to counter both instances of that triggered ability. Of Vaultborn, of Galta, and they certainly probably wouldn't be able to do that. Huh. Yeah. I think we'll uh we'll leave it there for tonight. I think it was pretty darn fantastic, pretty devastating. And, uh, I gotta say, Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, probably, likely staying in. So, oh, G uh, Gishath, uh, definitely Scorpion. Just for you or anybody else that enjoys Gishath, Sun's Avatar. Mm. 
I can make a ton of mana. I can splash for anything. I could make that work. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Have a good night. Scorpion, FK, Broken Suns, anybody else. Maybe Gish asked tomorrow night. A fantastic thumbnail art. Potential. Hmm. Yeah. As long as Gish asked, you know, connects, that would be lovely stuff. Just have it as part of the batch of Galta and, uh, whew, smoking. Smoking opponents. Yeah. Lots of potential, lots of death and destruction coming up. Right. Peace. Have a good one.